Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome back to Smirk. Every other week, one of our hosts introduces an original story, which we then use as a springboard for a spirited discussion on whatever the moral or theme of their story is. This time it is Amanda's turn. Story time. I have no idea what you're going to talk about this week. Nothing. None. It. You know what? It's. I tried to stray away from anything that was like violent or sad. Or political. Or po- definitely not political. It's really hard not to write politically right now. <laughs> <laughs> I I tried really hard to come up with an idea that did not revolve around anything that would, you know, stir up some feelings. You know, it's just you guys will probably actually have feelings on this, but not in a negative way. I think you'll just have a lot of good discussion on it. So you're going to it's empty. It's a very empty story. Is what you're telling us. Yeah, it's pointless. It's wasting everybody's time. <laughs> nice. <Exactly. Great. laughs> Knock it out now. Let's let everybody know the next 28 to 30 minutes are going to suck. Oh, no. This is actually probably the shortest story I've ever done. That doesn't mean we can't stretch it the hell out. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll find a way. We will get there. Amanda will have to repeat the point three times, so it'll, it'll, make, <laughs> it'll take up the time. Uh, uh, How rude. I'm feeling personally attacked right now. Uh, My feelings. You know, try to lighten the mood. That's all. <laughs> I think for 2021, we should all just agree that nobody's feelings matter anymore. I think that would make everybody a lot happier. Just no. stop caring about everybody's feelings. You're or so sensitive. Or maybe we just need to care more. Do we? Is, is we that do. what cancel culture needs is more caring? <laughs> I don't think so. Let's not talk about that. Not on my, you know what? We're not talking about any of the things that stir up some negative feelings. This is. Oh, this is happy. This is like a circus event. It's, it's not even, it's not happy and it's not unhappy. It's just like a neutral, like a discussion, a philosophical debate. It's like a nice neutral topic, like storming the Capitol building. It's not even dark. <laughs> Stop no. It. Stop. Stop ruining my He's neutrality like, oh, here. I got it in there. I got Out of it. all the people here, I am trying the hardest to keep this on neutral grounds, you two. Fair enough. You know what happens on neutral grounds? Somebody takes them over. I'm going to start my story. <laughs> Tracy has shocked art gallery viewers for years, but nothing like this piece. Her goal is to make the spectator interpret the intention in their own way, leaving room for various perspectives. After only a few steps into this display area, and whispers began. What? What is this? This is a mess. It looks like a crime scene. Tracy's ears perked and a smirk made its way out. This is what she wanted what she had hoped for. She knows what it means to her, but she looks to what others will see. In front of them sits a bed. The sheets are in disarray, the garbage can overflowing. Period-stained clothing lay atop the rug next to cigarettes, a pregnancy test, crumpled tissues, empty vodka bottles, lubricant, and condoms. You can imagine when a rich conservative attends a viewing, the last thing they'd expect is someone airing their dirty laundry in the most literal sense. Many critics huffed their way past, seeing it as a boring self-indulgence. But the viewers who could connect to it saw the vulnerability in Tracy's piece. They might not have understood her context, that its inspiration followed a bad breakup and a bedridden bender, but they felt the emotion— The notice her piece received kicked off her career and The Bed, as she titled it, became well known in contemporary art as the one that set a new standard for confessional art. It's short. It's done. Oh. It's done. I told you, it's literally the shortest story I think I've ever written. It's the most succinct I've ever been in words. I would agree with that for sure. (laughs) 100%. And I don't think I know what the moral or theme is. I'm... Oh, really? I thought it was easy. Art. I'm stupid. (laughs) Uh, Well, yes, but elaborate on that, Zachary. Dumb art. (laughs) Okay, okay, you're not actually too far off. (laughs) Art is subjective. Yes. Okay. 
and everybody sucks while everybody's awesome at the same time. <laughs> Participation tro- trophies. One might say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And with art, there's so much debate about what constitutes as art, despite it being self-expression. Mm. And so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about, so you have in this very short story. Whoa, 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 oh. whoa, whoa, oh, oh, whoa. Oh, oh. whoa. We're getting to 30 minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to address the beauty is in the eye of the beholder comment. Oh, no. Sometimes things, people, animals, whatever. Just ain't pretty. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not great people, wonderful people, but not everybody. You, you got to have a standard or you don't have a better than a standard. You know what I mean? Or worse than a standard, you know? Yeah. Okay. So let me introduce my question and then you can go on your rant about your feelings because I feel like you're going to have lots of them. I'm just letting you know, nagging doesn't work if you don't have that standard <laughs> where you have being beautiful and less than less And than as, as we've learned on Spork, there's nothing more important than nagging. <laughs> oh my God. This is a terrible, terrible piece of advice for people. Works sixty percent of the time, every neg. time. Aaron and oh I gosh. are gonna work together to melt this whole snowflake generation. Dear Lord. <laughs> okay, so what is the line between what is art and what's not art for you? And I know this is very, very mm. subjective, which is why I think it's the perfect way for us to have a conversation and debate on it. Because some question. people have a line, some people don't have a line. Some people say it's all within, you know, it's all about someone's perspective. It's about as long as they're expressing themselves, then it's art. And other people are like, well, if it doesn't look like shit, then it's art. So I'm curious Hmm. what you guys think. Well, that's a big question. That's deep. What is art? Uh, I guess, I mean, the broadest sense is art is something is something that makes you feel something. Hmm. I don't know. I would say art needs to be created. I would say art needs to be created by people for people. Not for yourself, but for people? Well, you're, you are a people. <laughs> okay, so, okay, all right. <laughs> That's uh, I interpreted it as other people, but I get you. I don't know, man. Well, if you want to make money from art, it's going to have to be for other people. Well, I think she just means in the abstract point of view, art. Like, what is it? When is it art? Here, here's an example. There was this mm. crazy banana art that went super viral, and I think someone paid a bunch of money for it too. Do you guys remember this story from a couple of years ago? Was it just like a bunch of bananas that somebody threw at a canvas? It was literally a banana peel. That's all it was. That's all there was to it. And some people were like, "Man, that's art," and other people were like, "Man, he just threw up a banana peel. That's not art." But like. To Zach's point, you have to create something. Is it really creating if you just take something and put it on display? Something that's already technically created and put it on display. Even if it's your form of expression. You're trying too hard. I don't know. That's pretentious. Relevant. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah. That's not art. That's irritation. I, I really feel, to me, um, there's a difference between art, artistic, and product. And that's probably where the difference lies. Like... A lot of things are product. A lot of think movies, books, TV, paintings, whatnot, they're product. They're made to make a profit. They're made to be sold. They're made to be rebranded and repackaged and, you know, dispersed through financial means. And then art is where there's passion involved. You you can tell in the way that it's drawn. You can tell in how crazy it is, aka Picasso. You can you can tell in how much someone puts into that work, how much, you know, they spent their life writing a book or they spent, you know, their fortune making a film or they, you know, whatever the case is, like that's art to me. Like once you have a personal investment of passion is art. What about those paintings that you'll sometimes see where it literally looks like art, like paint was just like spewed all over like it doesn't seem like there's real intention but you know somebody might have been in a passionate moment and they were just painting with their feelings or they paint with music i I think if it's personal passion then i i consider it art like if you if there's a lot of music i don't like but if they are passionate about it they wrote it you know and they like billy was it billy eilish is her name yeah She's she has some good songs. I'm not knocking her, but I'm like she's not somebody I'm going to run out and see in concert or anything like I could. But she, you know, because COVID. But she is a, as someone that a lot of people are very passionate about. And when she 
is performing, you can see that passion in her. To me, that's art. And then you see someone like, I don't know, Flo Rida. And I'm thinking, maybe less passion, because really, he's just trying to make that money. So uh, to me, it's that if you're motivated by money, I don't consider that art. If you're motivated by passion, personal passion, I consider that art. That's just how I see it. That's good. That's a good view. So to your point, what is not art? Is there anything, you know, even in terms of the categories, some people consider art to be actual like canvas mediums, drawings, things like that. And they don't consider music and film to be oh. art. When think you think of the any, word art. Anything that has a creative form, that is a creative form of expression has the capacity to be art. And then Disney gets involved and ruins it. <laughs> hey, Disney makes art. The Last the last Jedi is art. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> Bless your heart. Yeah, so I, I think very much the consumerism can ruin art, for sure. Doesn't mean that it always does. There's m- many big budget work pieces of art out there. And then there's stuff like the fountain that are just hot, wet, sticky garbage. The, the fountain is the banana peel art of cinema. <laughs> exactly. I'd argue Lady in the Water is. Well, you'd be wrong. No, it's definitely the fountain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's my thing. Non-art is when the passion's removed, when it's just a product. That's okay. Yeah. But it does it, it can expand into different categories, which is good because that's going to pertain to one of my questions later. Mm. Well, I know to your to your mass market consumerism point, though, like some of those things definitely make people feel, you know, emotions. So, like to me, they're still art. They can be interpreted differently by different people. I don't know. Well, you have the right to your opinion. I have the right to mine. No, you don't. Get off the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I also, on the same token, Zach. To be fair, I also find the concept of what is art to be a pretentious argument. Often, sure, yeah. When people say, like, Mank. Okay, here's a prime example of a recent film. And I, everything goes back to movies for me personally. But Mank is a film that was on Netflix. And it was shot in a very 1940s feel. It's supposed to be what happened behind the scenes of the film Citizen Kane. And I think it's one of the most boring movies made of the entire decade, really. Let, well, you know what? The decade just started. The last decade, too. <laughs> yeah, super pretentious. But if you ask it, most people, they will say it's art. It's art, because David Fincher had a passion for the material. Gary Oldman, the actor, had a passion for the role, and I could I could hear the argument. But when I watch it, all I see is pretentious. Like this is just somebody that is just trying so hard to be unique. They lost sight of what their passion was. That's my personal opinion. So I, I really feel like you can you can lose your way. You can, the sometimes the ego is fed a little bit too much, and that's where it becomes less art, more pretentious. I hope that made sense, because I lost, I felt like I lost it, my It made my sense to me. I understood. Okay. Yeah, man, this is, a weird, this is like a weirdly hard topic for me to wrap my head <laughs> around. What is art? I told you it was going to be deep, but like a neutral conversation. Like, it's nothing that gets too many emotions up in the air. Right. I mean, I feel like the strongest art is something you make for yourself but the idea i don't know is to make other people feel something right like make make you make it sound like you know david fincher was trying to show off not necessarily try to like reach his audience in any way that's the way i personally took it but there are a lot of people that raved about it and i'm just like i feel like you're raving about it because it's not like everything else and that's not a good enough reason for me to rave about something yeah well i think that i think that happens a lot in critical spheres where oh yeah, yeah. when something is out of when it's hard to understand something it's easy to praise it because you're like well it must be genius <laughs> and sometimes it's just not good yeah you know it's okay it's okay. you know what you can have art and still be bad there's that ah, too pause here so wait, wait if, you never answered like what is art and what isn't art for you you didn't really well, say you guys kind of covered it for me i mean i do believe that it's in each person's perspective like i can't necessarily say that this banana peel is not art to somebody because if they made it with, really? like you said, the intent of passion, who am I to argue what their passion is and what they see in it? I can't argue that. I I can only argue that my perception deems it not artistic, that I don't have any passion for it. Just like not everybody connects to every piece of art, which is the whole beauty of art in all forms is that it 
it resonates with the people that it needs to. And the goal is to try to resonate it with people that it might not naturally resonate to and try to broaden its horizons. But ultimately, you're making it for yourself and for the people that can connect to it that are like you. And I don't know, man, if someone's willing to pay money for a banana peel, canvas, whatever it was, art, then they obviously had some interest in it for whatever reason. Maybe, I don't know, maybe... They had like a, it's like a car accident. If you told me I got a <laughs> banana peel painting, I'm like, I got to see that. 10 bucks. You could see it. Oh, no, it's right. not a, it wasn't a painting. It was an actual banana peel. Well, of course it was. Cause you know what? It was a monkey with a beatnik poet's hat in the back, just throwing banana peels at a canvas. Here's the beautiful thing. Maybe somebody had like, they were a research scientist and they had, um, they used monkeys in experiments. They're really drawn to anything with monkeys. And oh, so, so they, they tortured this, the monkeys and then the monkeys like threw the banana peels <laughs> and, they saw this, and, and it reminded them of the monkey. And so that's why they connected to it. Here's Stop why experimenting I, on me. <laughs> <laughs> I have not the ability to tell you what you're passionate about. And because then it becomes. True. That's true. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And so art is anything that you feel passion and creativity for. But I also wonder where our lines are on artists who recreate other art. Does that make them an artist or does that just make them a copycat? Mm. This was not one of my original questions, but I'm curious now. Are you talking about like the Psycho remake? (laughs) Okay, here's a really great example of something that I just recently. You just found asked the question, about. and then she's moving on to her answer. No, no, no. This know, is... You get shots fired at Vince Vaughn, I yeah. see. <laughs> Tell us again. You're hardly going to talk in this episode. Go ahead. No, I just meant my story was short. That's all. Of course, all right. I'm going to talk a ton. Go ahead. So there's this app. You can take a photo that's already been captured. You take the photo and you trace outside the lines of it and you recreate the image with like minimalistic lines. You don't see the eyes. You don't see the mouth. Blah, yeah, blah, that's blah. not art. People pay commission for this. It's all done on an app. You're basically recreating, you know, a piece of photography, which is already an initial piece of art in itself. Mm-hmm. So does that make someone an artist because nope. they're tracing the lines? You know what I'm saying here nope. is where we You're start a tracer. to come into. No, You're no. a tracer. <laughs> Small rats. <laughs> You're a tracer. Nope, nope, nope. That is not art. I remember, uh, t- oh, sh- long story short, but when I was younger, I was in art class and I was very, very, I'm very, at the time, a very good drawer or a freehand drawer and I'm not great anymore but because i stopped practicing because practice makes perfect we we had this we had this assignment where you you take this huge canvas which roughly the size of a movie poster just put it on its side so it's landscape size and you you have uh, it was on graph paper and you're basically supposed to um each each square you take one little section and you would basically retrace whatever the lines were and the the it's basically like you put it together like a puzzle and if you do every single box you will have a picture of a tiger, which sounds really cool, right? You just like basically put little sections of draw, you draw, you recreate in each little box. I could not do that. So I actually scrapped all of using that and I just just drew it. Basically, I looked at the picture and I drew it and I matched it. I mean, it looked just like it. And they failed me for it, even though it was the exact same size because I didn't have every little line in the right box because I just drew it freehand. You would think that would be cool to someone because I had a passion for drawing, but the assignment was to do this stupid box test. Now, all those people got A's for not really doing anything creative. They couldn't do, they just, they just put little circles in a box and everybody put the same circle in the same box and the same, you know, shaded in the same box. And then they ended up with everybody, their, their project looked pretty much the same. But to me, that's not art. Like, to me, that's not art. That was just tracing. Well, and now we've come to a a much different topic about how creativity is sort of suppressed in at least American society. Mm. Uh, Until more recently, I feel like, where it's becoming becoming a thing. You know, on Twitter and all of this, and Etsy, with all of these different platforms, people are able to get appreciated for their art. But still, when you think about the educational system... It's about passing assessments. It's about making sure you do that for your school. You know, even if it's not the teacher's desire and they wish that they could have elicit more creativity, there's a level of requirement 
just for them to receive funding. And that's based on assessments. And creativity doesn't have, it exist in assessments. So how do we – creativity kind of builds everything for us. It's how engineers are developed. It's how writers are developed. It's how artists are developed. And that's like a whole other topic too about building – creatives in our society when so what, what is the question how do we how do we encourage creativity yeah like what things? can we even do about that well i mean as the education system as it stands the people who want to be creative so are creative you just kind of have to fight the system which really makes you more creative anyway you know by fighting and fighting the system yeah it almost like it takes a creative mind to to do it their own way anyway that's how you get batman Perfect. I, as many Batman as we can find would be great. <laughs> one, one, one Batman a week. I, I'll tell you what I think people should like. Don't stymie when you have kids or you have friends and they're doing the, that thing that you don't understand. So you think it's a waste of their time. Stop trying to stymie their enjoyment of it. That's a way to, to yeah, encourage Yeah, I guess that's creativity. good. Like parents have some work to do. Not only just parents, friends. I mean, family members and everything else. I mean, I, I can... You know, I'm sure you each have, can attest this too, is like when I was growing up, there would be people who would support me writing or doing things that, you know, everybody else like, go outside, but I'm writing and I love doing that or I'm watching movies. And for me, a lot of it is like just studying filmmaking and they would say, well, you just need to go outside, you know, and they're trying to cut off your creativity because that's, that's festering, that's feeding your creative juices so that the stuff that you want to make you know how to make, you can make later, you can try to make later. And people that st stomp on that really can stomp out people's creativity. I've known many people that were very creative and then they go and they, they marry the wrong person or they <laughs> make the wrong choice or they, you know, and then they're suddenly like, well, a more creative outlet for them. They're just living life now. Oh, I bet you the video gamer inside Zach is screaming right now because there's so many people who tell kids that, no, video games are bad for you. There's nothing inherently good when in a lot of cases- Well, you can't overdo it. I mean, you, you can't can, overdo it. You can. Anything can be overdone. Oh my <laughs> Zach's gosh. like, no, no, you can't. 23 hours a day is normal. I don't know, man. <laughs> can, you, can you watch too many movies? Uh, that's a good argument. That's a good argument. I'm just, in one day, probably- if, if I haven't left my couch. You'd probably say that there are lessons you've learned and have used in real life due to video games, would you not? Well, yeah, sure. Innumerable. You know, I mean, I learned Pokemon taught me the majority of my vocabulary as a kid. Hmm. But, to, but to those people and those parents who say that video games had no value, like, I mean, first of all, they're they're dwindling in number. So I don't really, I don't really lose any sleep over it like other people I know. And the old the old argument of like is video game art and like the answer is yes it's over we're done like I don't I don't know why people are still it is art yeah. questioning it people still say it's not art I mean do you, look at what goes into making a video game I don't know how you can make that argument right I feel I feel like honestly the biggest hang up is just the term for it video game like it makes it sound childish so I, I mean I feel like people still associate with Pac Man but those people are dying off so <laughs> who cares one by one they crumble. <laughs> oh, video games today wish they were as fun as Pac-Man. I'm just letting you know. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Get off my lawn! I mean, Amanda, you're right. Growing up, like I definitely incur or encountered plenty of people who didn't understand about video game, or even, or even when I was in college, you know, five or six years ago, all of my all of my speeches in speech class were about how video, you know, the power of video games, and I had people who'd come up to me and go like, oh my god, I had no idea, you know, video games told stories at all. So I just think... It's a battle of attrition. Movies went through the same thing, you know. They were considered they were considered cheating back in the day. Uh, I mean, it's just or like especially when they added a uh, sound. Remember, like that was that was a huge point in film history of like they're you know they're cheating to get the story across, etc. So I mean, it's just people always fight. The comics went through the same thing. I'm just not gonna. I'm not worried about it. Okay, so one of the points that I wanted to come back to is about, it seems like we all kind of have some belief that individuals have perception of art. I mean, would you agree or not agree with beauty is in the eye of the beholder? In, yes or no? Just give me a yes or no. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. <laughs> I, there's so much more I want to say to that. Yes, but you, you've expressed that it comes with passion. Yes, I agree that 
Not everybody is creative, though. Like, that's that's one thing I just think mm. is important. A lot of people think are creative. Are. Not everybody is creative. A lot of people are just fine not being creative. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, you need people in the world that aren't creative, too. I mean, how much stuff can you make, you know? Okay, so you talked a, a bit about how art for you, Aaron, is based on passion. But you also alluded to the technical capabilities of whatever sort of art it is. So when we talk about awards for art and like best of anything, hmm. is that based on technicality? Should it be? Or is it based on passion? And should it be? Like, how do we feel about that? I mean, it's based on subjective popularity. The <laughs> the the most amount of people who like the thing, and I think that it's the best. And I think that that is a fair way to assess it. If you want a a group award, you know, if 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 best picture, it should be the the movie that affected the most. I don't know who judges. Is it directors who judge these things, or is it critics combination? It's usually for awards. It's what you know. It's whatever guild you're with. So if it's video games, usually for story it'll be the writers that vote to get the nominees in there and so in the oscars the actors vote for the best actor nominees the writers vote for the best writer nominees and then once the nominees are announced then everybody gets to vote on the rest and whatever's yeah. left and that seems fair because awards are n nothing but an excuse to pat yourself on the pat each other on the back anyway it's true true as a winner so, of two awards you... that i love to tell people about <laughs> Do you have like an adverse reaction to awards in general then? Or would you gladly accept an award yourself? For for me, awards are unnecessary, but it's sort of fun to watch. I mean, it is very much like patting somebody on the back. And I do feel like a lot of times the real winners don't get recognized. And it's always a popularity contest. Whoever spends the most money to get their thing in front of their groups is actually who gets nominated, and I'm not a big fan of that because that to me isn't really an artistic award. It's just more like a popularity contest. You know what I've found out most recently that I I guess I was just super naive to? A lot of awards you can nominate yourself for. Yep. What? That's true. Yep. <laughs> to me, that takes away all of the beauty of the award. You're just, you literally are patting yourself on the back. Most awards recognized. are like that. Most awards you... You have to submit yourself to. It's just so bizarre to me that that's, that's the reality, you know? Mm -hmm. Zach, would you ever accept an award or do you have like an adverse feeling to it? Anybody who says they would not accept an award is a liar. <laughs> True. <laughs> so you want to feel special. <laughs> the, only, the only people who say they don't, wouldn't accept an award are the people who don't get nominated for awards. <laughs> okay, fair. So yeah, I would take an award. It would be hard to take, I don't know, I guess all the credit. But it, like, let's say, let's say I got an award for comic book writing. It would be hard not to like want to, you know, shine the light on the artist or something or the editor. So I don't know. So I mean, I would take the award, of course. Look at you being modest. It's not modest. It's just realistic. Who knew you had this? No, you know, I know Compassion. Christopher Nolan. I'm sure Christopher Nolan thinks he does everything single handedly. <laughs> yeah, not all of us <laughs> operate that way. That seven or eight minutes of names after his movies are over say otherwise. Boy, oh boy, does he seem like a believer in himself, though? <laughs> he really does. Is there ever, ever, and think about this seriously and try not to make it like political or anything like that, but is there oh, ever yeah. a time where art should be censored? Is there, because I know this <sighs> is a very, very heated hmm. debate for some people, but no. thinking. The answer is no. Even if it's pro hate or anything that's like really just aggressively, you know, pro Nazi or something like that. Censored or edited, those are two different things. Because if you here's my here's my only argument for editing, not I don't call it censoring, is if you have a great idea, a passionate idea for a story, you write a script, or you write a book, or you make a video game, or you write a, an album, you're and you take it to somebody else and they say we'll produce that thing. They're using their money. So if they say, we'll put it out, we'll give you $20 million to make the movie. We'll give you a $100,000 advance on the book. We'll give you the money and the studio to make the album, whatever it is. But you have to cut this one thing. I don't see it as you're compromising your artistic values by cutting that line. I don't consider that censorship. 
I consider that part of production. It's part of business. If you want to, they're giving you money to get your thing made. They might not make their money back, but they're giving you their money. Now, if you go off and do it on your own, you make it yourself and you put it in the store and then the radio puts it puts it on or a, a, a streaming network picks up your movie and then they want to trim some of it. That's when I, because it's offensive to somebody, that's censorship. To me, that's the difference. But yeah. you are openly, like you are vehemently, did I say that word right? Vehemently. Vehemently. Against people not even being able to submit, publish, all of that something that is considered offensive to one group or you know what I mean? Oh, 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 oh I see what you're saying. Um, do, do we, do I think certain things shouldn't be made if they're offensive to people? Like, is right, that what you're like asking? here's, here's my example. If something is like pro Nazi, like, yeah, Hitler, you know, like it's not even about us. It's not necessarily a story. It's just somebody is creating a ton of, let's say paintings or artwork or, um, music or something like that, and it's just should we shut them down because we don't like it? <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Is there, I, is that there a censorship. Limit on that? that censorship. Look, there is lots of stuff I don't agree with out in the world. I don't want to. If you, if you start taking down stuff that you don't like just because you don't like it, now I'm not talking about certain services. <laughs> that violated terms of agreements and whatnot. <laughs> I'm talking about if you if you want to shut it down just because it makes you mad or it makes you sad or it makes your feelings hurt. No, that sense I don't agree with that. I just I just don't agree with that. I think the the wonderful thing about America is you have the right to be an asshole. You have the right to hate people and put it out there and you just have to deal with the consequences if that's what you want to do. Right. That's your right. It's not our right to shout you into submission. That's not <laughs> what it's about. That's not freedom to me. That is just, you know, a, a huge, that's just bullying. It's just bullying. And I don't agree with bullying in any form, even if you're bullying the bully. Yeah. I mean, you can make, you can make a pro Hitler novel about the virtues of Nazism, but you know, Simon and Schuster is not obligated to publish it. And Amazon is not published or not obligated to, exactly. to sell it. So it's just, yeah, I yeah, I think you can make you should make whatever art you want, and the government should not be able to step in. And it's just up to the the distribution channels to decide if they want if they want to host that stuff. And if and if they don't, then you have to go elsewhere. And if there was if there was an audience for your pro Nazism, there would be a way for people to see it. But like in that example, there isn't that audience. But you wouldn't consider it censorship if, let's say, Amazon didn't pick up somebody's novel for no. their own personal reasons. Just, I'm, I'm just clarifying. There are some people no, who feel that censors, is. censors. Look, if censorship isn't evolved, it doesn't. Censorship doesn't revolve around business. It doesn't revolve around a private business's choice. They they don't have an obligation to put out whatever you have or to produce whatever you have. They don't, they're not obligated to it. They are obligated to whatever their bottom line is. And if it, they feel it's going to damage their bottom line, they have every right to not touch it or to get rid of it or to whatever. As long, I mean, that's why they have all those terms and agreements and services that nobody ever reads because they're covering their ass yeah. on that. So they can ditch you in a heartbeat. If they don't like Ariana Grande puts out a song and they hate it and it's offensive <laughs> and it makes everybody want to throw her under a bus. They could just cut her, because, cut her off their services because they've got that in the terms of an agreement. Whenever they signed with her, they covered their bases in their private business. They can do that. Sure, censorship is when the government actually comes in and says you mm -hmm. have to change that. Now, when they throw Huck Finn out of schools, to me, that's censorship. Yeah, that's unquestionably. That's not right. I mean, that's that's well, that's trying to erase history, which I Absolutely. think is garbage in general. See, this has been a very good debate and conversation, you guys. And we didn't even bring up anything that I normally would bring up. Danced around a little bit. Not, no, I avoided all of that. I specifically avoided all of it. Well, nice job. Now you want to talk about how pornography is art? Yeah, of course it is. Ooh, that is a great topic. Okay. Oh, man. When that pizza guy shows up, he... <laughs> he I mean, hey, you know what? It makes me feel something. <laughs> okay, so let's actually talk about this. So, is uh -oh. porno consensual Ooh. consensual pornography that's that doesn't involve trafficking this or anything like that? <laughs> is that still is that art? 
It's funny. I brought up I brought up the pornography just to make fun of Amanda's need to talk about sex every episode. And here we well, go. Okay. Yet, well, here we go. <laughs> and she mentioned sex trafficking. Well, there oh, it is. Oh boy. Yeah, well, no, so, I said take that out of it. Like consensual take your shot. pornography. Yeah, we, we got it. Yeah. We got no. It. Yes. It, it's art. Is it there art? are awards for it. Uh, There's although, awards for porn. Yes, yeah. Of course. I've got, a, I've got a buddy who went to the porn awards See? and he said it was what? a wonderful time. That sounds like a good time. time. Although I have, I've always wondered if your if your daughter's up for actress of the year, do you attend? Yeah, right. Support. Good you job. Because they're going to show. Job. I assume they're going to show a clip. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so first of all, <laughs> I'm having a, a hard clip. time wrapping my head around the fact that this is actually real. And oh. now I have painted this picture where, like, dads are in the audience. There are awards for podcasting. Of course, there are awards for pornography. And next oh up, Daisy dear. Buttons for the plumber. <laughs> Daisy Buttons. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I think that's going to do it. Well, no, we guys... didn't answer the question. Is porn art? It can be, sure. He said yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anything can be art. You know what? It depends on if there's passion in it. Exactly. <laughs> if it feels like it's a product, if it's being orchestrated, if you're, you could tell she keeps looking at the camera, not wanting to know where to put her leg. That's not art. That's just acting. Right. That's phoning it in. I don't mm -hmm. feel anything in that scenario. But when the camera, you know, is tracing the body slowly, you know, you get those artistic angles. When when Spielberg directs pornography, it's great. <laughs> yeah. But here, here's what I want to know: Is this art? Because this seems to be a trend I hear. <laughs> what is with everybody's obsessions with moms and dads and brothers and sisters? Like everything is a family thing. What? What? Where did that come from? I don't understand when what that. What are you talking about? And Zach knows. He's, he's talking about yeah, incest porn. Of course, it's the it's the biggest subcategory going right now. What? I, I think the honest answer. I'm learning Aaron, so much about porn here. <laughs> is because I think the majority of people, especially in childhood, have some sort of incestuous thought. Whether it. <gasps> Ew. Whether it's about a cousin, you know, or what. And I think it's your first sexual taboo you generally in encounter in life. And nobody wants to admit it. But I think the numbers, uh, the viewership numbers or the pornography indicate the truth. Hmm. Didn't you do a topic on this already? I think so. Did you? He did. Because remember, it was years super ago. weird. Like, it wasn't years <laughs> it was, ago. It was like last year. Super weird. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's something like in an anonymous survey, like something like eighty percent of people admit to having encountered some kind of incest in their consensual incest in their life. <laughs> Ew, David. <laughs> you don't remember this entire episode? No, this? no. You must have but I think it out. I think we're good. Yeah, I because my sim my simplest <laughs> argument was the the expression "kiss and cousins." Exists from something. I remember that. I don't remember the yeah. porn being a part of that, though. No, I don't, I don't think porn came up in that discussion. Okay. I was approaching okay. it romantically, okay, from a oh. very adult point of view. Oh, like I came at it like a child, <laughs> like a child who just saw candy in the drawer. You know, like Ooh. I can't help it. I'm in love with my mother. <laughs> you know, like that. Oh my god, <laughs> those are those are real scenes. You guys um, really took this to a different direction. Sorry, let's get back on to art. <laughs> I was, I was on art. <laughs> oh, dear. sometimes the art's on me. Is that his name? Uh, did you say sometimes the art was on me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I okay. cut that joke off. That was good. <laughs> Do you think good. my story is truth or fiction? Oh, uh, truth. Truth. It is true. Tracy Eamon from 1998. This was her her story and her piece of art called... Uh -huh. Oh, I shouldn't say. Cause what is the title of your story? <laughs> it is The Bed. I get the connection. Bow. I get mm -hmm. it. Wow, wow. Should have been there. Hey, perfect connection to porn. So we can go with that. <laughs> Yep. It all comes around. <laughs> now I am a child because I giggled at that. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it. And as our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. If you'd like to submit yours, go to my story at smirkpodcast.com. Join the conversation by joining our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast. Be sure to use the show's hashtag Smirk. You don't want to miss an episode, so please do that. We're also at smirkpodcast.com. And as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. Yeah, Amanda, there's some freaky shit on porn. I'm just letting you know, like freaky. How do you guys keep updated on the latest trends? I don't know, but there's a lot, also a lot of people getting stuck in things. And I don't understand that. Yeah, like, what I don't my understand. Hand, <laughs> my hand got stuck, stuck in a in sink. Things?
Yeah. My hand got stuck in a sink. Oh, goodness. What's going to happen? Oh, thank God Billy's there to pull. Oh, no. He wants to have sex and I can't do anything? Oh, no. What? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's weird. That's weirdly taken off right now. It's like she's trying to clean out a garbage disposal the whole time. All I'd be thinking is, what if that thing turns on? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Well, I mean, there's like the, like, oh, no, I got stuck in the dryer. And then they just like, what? Bang, and they just bang <laughs> the shit out of them. In the in dryer? A, they have sex in the dryer. In well, a couch like, cushion. They're like bent over getting clothes out of the dryer. And then, oh, no, I'm stuck. Uh, okay. Oh, no. And now that here comes my. dangerous. Thankfully, my brother is here to help. Oh, no. I've always been waiting for you to be stuck in this dryer. <laughs> yeah, finally. There will be no repercussions from this action. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. 